So today we're looking at lead code number 912. Uh, it's called sort an array and in this video we're going to look at using bubble sort to sort this array. Now bubble sort is the worst way you can use, the worst method you can use to sort an array and so the purpose of this video is really to explain bubble sort and also explain why you don't want to use this and we'll go over the more efficient sorts but um, I think it's good to know how this algorithm works and why this is a bad algorithm compared to other options. Okay, so the idea behind it is, is you're gonna use two pointers, okay? We have an array here, five, one, one, two, zero, zero. And we have our ith pointer and we have our jth pointer. And these are gonna run next to each other and they're just going to swap the numbers if the ith element is greater than the jth element. And it's gonna keep on scanning this array until there are no swaps. And once it reaches a point where there are no swaps, it can be assumed that the array is sorted. Okay, so I'll, we'll do like one or two passes at this just to help, help, uh, help make the idea clear. So here I have the ith pointer and I have the jth pointer, and they're pointing to five and one respectively. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check is a of i, Okay, array of i, uh, is it greater than array at j? And in this case, it is. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna swap this five and this one. Okay, so one will go here and five will go here, and then we're gonna go ahead and increment our i and j. And the same thing, we're gonna check, is that ith element greater than the jth element? In this case, it is. And so same thing, we're gonna perform a swap here between five and one. One will go here and five will go here. And J and I will increment. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna check is uh, the element at the ith index greater than the element at the jth index. It is in this case. And so again, we're gonna just go ahead and perform a swap. Okay, we'll go ahead and put our two here and we'll put our five here and then increment i and j okay and we're going to do the same thing and just just to just for the sake of time and and not repeating myself uh we'll just go ahead and do both of these swaps in one go so here we're going to check is five greater than zero it is and so zero will go here and then on the next round it's going to be the same thing so initially after this first pass we're going to get the final array which is going to look like this 005 and our i and j pointer at this point will be at the end okay and so now now that we've done that what we do know is that the greatest number or the, the one of the the largest number in the array is at the end okay so five is in the correct position and so now we can go ahead and reset our i and j pointers and just scan the array again and swap these numbers accordingly. Now, there's two ways you can go about this, okay? You can go ahead and do a complete scan all over again to the end and then scan to the end, do the swaps and swaps and so forth, okay? And if you do it that way, you're going to get uh, uh, O of n squared, but you're going to be going through the array uh, quadratic time every single time to the end. Now, if we know that this five is in the correct position, when we run this scan again, two will end up in the correct position, then we don't need to go all the way to the end. We can just go ahead and say, okay, the first scan, we go all the way to the end. The second scan, we're gonna go all the way to the second to the end. Third scan, we're gonna go third to the end. Fourth scan, we go fourth to the end, and fifth scan, and so forth, okay? The way we do that is that we have a count variable here. So here, on every single scan, we're just gonna go ahead and increment this count, and then we're gonna subtract it from the length, and that will let us know where to uh, end our i and j iterations, okay? So that's the idea behind bubble sort. Um, it's not too hard to implement, but it's just, it, it, it can get a little tricky with variables, so we'll go over it in the code uh, to kind of just step through that step by step. And let's just take a look at time and space complexity on this. So even if we do this micro-optimization with the count variable, the, the time on this worst case is still O of n squared. Okay, and whether we're, we're looking at the best case 
or the worst case or the average case, average case, it's always going to be O of n squared. And this is why bubble sort is a bad algorithm. You have other algorithms like insertion sort, which are not as complex. They do have a worst case of O of n squared. However, if the array is partially sorted, then we can actually get uh, much better time uh, complexity. We can actually get O of n time complexity. Okay, so if you're gonna use this method of swapping um, with sorting, insertion sort is a much better, uh, much better option, and we'll go over the solution for that in another video. But it, it's good to know why bubble sort is bad because no matter what the array looks like, it's always going to be O at n squared. Now, what about space complexity? Well, we're not creating any new space relative to the size of the input. We have the count variable, we have the length variable, we have the i and j indices, but we're not creating a new array, we're not, we're not splitting the array, we're not slicing it, we're not doing anything like that where we have to create new space. So in terms of space, this is actually a great algorithm. It's constant space. Okay. So that's the conceptual. Let's move on over to the code and take a look at how we can implement this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first um, implement this without the count optimization, and then we'll go ahead and implement that count optimization, and we'll look at the performance differences. So what we wanna do here is we want to have a variable, and we'll call it swap, and we'll just set it to true, okay? And now what we wanna do is we just wanna say while swap is true, in, right after right after we go into that, we want to update our swap and set it to false. Okay, and now what we want to do is inside of this, we want to go ahead and scan that array and see if there's any elements where the ith uh, element is greater than the jth element. And if we can get through that scan and there's no swaps, then we know that the array is sorted and we can break out of that while loop. But if it is, if we do create a swap, then we have to keep on scanning that array. We have to keep on doing that linear operation. So here we have for let i equals zero, i is less than uh, nums.length, and we'll go ahead and increment i. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check, uh, we can just set j to uh, i plus one, okay? And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check is if nums at i is greater than nums at j. And if it is, then we just wanna swap those two, those two variables, or those two elements, okay? So we'll just do, I'll just use a JavaScript shortcut here. We'll just do nums at i, nums at j is gonna equal nums at j and nums at i, and then all we have to do after this is just update our swap. Because we are creating a swap operation, we just do set swap to true. Okay, and then after that, we just return our nums. So at any point in this scan, right, at any point when we're scanning through this array that there is a swap operation, then we're gonna go ahead and set that variable swap to true and it'll continue scanning the array, even if it doesn't, doesn't do any swaps after that, that variable, variable will be true, and then we can keep on running that for loop until we can reach a point where there's no swaps. So let's go ahead and run that. It does pass this initial test case, but you can see when we go ahead and run the full test case, once that input gets huge, because it's running in such bad time complexity, it, it, it actually times out. So this will this might take a minute, but yeah, you can see time limit exceeded. So how do we get this to solve in leak code? We have to do this count optimization here. So let's just set this variable to let count equals zero. And then all we want to do is that when we go ahead and scan this array, we know that the largest number will get to the end. So we just minus count from uh, the length. And then we just want to increment count every time we uh, break out of this loop. Okay, so all we're doing here is that once we put place five here, right, that count variable will increment and uh, 
So we're not gonna, the i and jth element is not gonna come all the way to the end. Okay, it's gonna actually stop uh, up to this point. And then we'll have two there, it'll scan again, and it'll stop up to this point, it'll stop up to this point, and then that point. So it's not gonna scan all the way to the end every time, it doesn't need to, because we know that count variable is pushing back on it. And also we know that this five is in the correct place. And then we do the second scan, we know the two is gonna be in the correct place. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And you can see it's taking forever just because it's, it's a very slow algorithm. It's just a, it's not a very efficient one. And yeah, so you can see that it does pass, but the runtime is terrible. It's at 5%. Space time is not bad. Um, it's constant space, so we're beating out a significant portion. Okay, so that is lead code 912 bubble sort. Um, we're going to do a series of these videos. We'll look at the other two uh, iterative sorts, and then we'll look at a different strategy that are much, much more efficient with merge sort and quick sort. Um, okay, so hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all on the next one.